Hello, time to say et la la day, ani, bonjour. Welcome back to Our Shared Politics. My name is Nova, I am a settler on Turtle Island. I created this podcast to really showcase socialism instead of just pursuing the Red Scare blindly, which in turn just pushes people further apart. I wish to express acknowledgement that I am on Treaty 8 territory, home to the Tetskene, Deneza, Nahiawak, Soto, and BC Metis. It is essential I recognize all First Nations, Metis, and Inuit, both status and non status, as the guardians of these lands. As a non Indigenous person, I play a role as a treaty partner, being represented by the government. My pronouns are she, her, but I also accept they, them, and I fall under the 2S LGBTQIA plus umbrella. I say these things at the top of every episode so that you are able to make your decision on how safe of a person I am. Ladies and gentle thems, I truly in my heart believe we are firmly supplanted in late stage capitalism, end stage capitalism, whatever you want to call it. We have been stuck in an imperialist capitalist society for at least a hundred years now, and socialism is the only true way out. Using the term the one percent doesn't even work anymore because we've now officially begun using the term the point zero one percent because the wealth inequality gap just continues to grow and grow. Everyone still believes in the free market. But free competition, sans regulations, inevitably gives rise to the creation of monopolies and the concentration of capital in a few giant enterprises. These words are not mine, but are Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels from the Communist Manifesto. No other aspect of Marxism has been attracted more by the bourgeoisie than his prediction that the free market would always give rise to monopoly capitalism. For decades, economists and right-wingers alike have tried to deny this claim, but the entire course of the last 150 years, basically, since Marx and Engels first published their text, has done nothing but prove them right. Although this process did not culminate during the lifetime of Marx, Vladimir Lenin was in a position to analyze it in great detail using the vast amounts of of statistics at his disposal after the Great War. Quote, The stranglehold of the big banks and their parasitic and exploitive nature was exposed to the whole world by the crisis of 2008. The scandalous bailouts involving trillions of dollars of taxpayers' money were handed out to the banks by governments. This outrageous subsidy of the rich by the poor is the clearest possible example of the fusion of the big corporations and banks with the state, which lies at the heart of Lenin's definition of imperialism. End quote. Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. By Lenin. Where is it? By Lenin. The big banks are closely entwined with the state and would not survive for a day without massive injections of public subsidies. In this strange Alice in Wonderland world, the poor subsidize the rich. It is a case of Robin Hood in reverse. Capitalism does nothing but grow the disparity and detachment between rich and poor and leads to the temporarily embarrassed millionaires we see everywhere around us today. People vote against their best interests because they'd rather believe that maybe, just maybe, one day they can be the ones receiving all of the tax cuts and not trickling down their funds. Capitalists have yelled down socialists and communists for decades, swearing up and down that the working class has disappeared, that we're all middle class now, that this system does not impoverish the masses, but enriches them, and that it was a very good thing for the rich to grow richer because a portion of their wealth would eventually trickle down to the poor, thus rendering poverty a thing of the past. Meanwhile, I'm over here some 40 years after this pyramid scheme of Reaganomics began, wondering when the fuck the trickle is supposed to start. Literally every single good thing we have in this country is from socialism. Minimum wage? That's a socialist ideal. You can sure as hell bet capitalists would rather not pay you. Grade school? That's socialist. Capitalists would rather have you uneducated, and if you had to get an an education, it would be whatever your family could afford. None of this communist public education that just creates woke children. 
universal health care. Now, I know our healthcare system is far from perfect, but that's from capitalists gouging it every single time they could and then turning around and trying to use that as proof that socialism doesn't work and that we should privatize. This is neo-feudalism at its finest. On every single country on our planet, the rich rule and the poor are expected to bow their heads submissively to the yoke of capital. And calling myself poor is not something I take any sort of shame in because wealth is relative. And when I talk about poor people, I'm talking about everyone on earth in the 99.9%. Even if you are a millionaire, you are dirt poor compared to a billionaire. And we need to begin to realize that. The petty bourgeoisie will need to make a choice. And soon, will they be with us or against us? As always, thank you for joining me today. I drop a new episode every Monday, so check back in next week to see what I'll be sharing with you then. So-called Canada is in a fentanyl and mental health crisis right now. Please consider picking up a free naloxone kit at your local pharmacy and do not use alone. For any Indigenous listeners out there, the Hope for Wellness helpline offers immediate, culturally aware, and trauma-informed help to all Indigenous peoples across Canada. It is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, in English and French, to offer immediate support and crisis intervention. While there are supports in Cree, Ojibwe, and Inuktut, those are not available 24-7, so you may need to call in to find out the next time that a language speaker will be available. Call the toll-free helpline at 1-855-242-3310 or connect to the online chat at www.hopeforwellness.ca. And there is also the Thunderbird Wellness app that provides access to Indigenous perspectives on wellness and health, including substance abuse and mental health. Now, not that Indigenous people can't also use these next resources, they just don't advertise as culturally aware or trauma-informed. So, for everyone else, if you must use a loan, please keep in mind you can call one 888 688-6677 to contact the National Overdose Response Services to access support while using and especially using alone. And there is the Brave app with a use alone timer that connects a paramedic with your location if you don't respond. For mental health support, you can contact 988 to get connected to a crisis responder. If you learned something new today, it'd be awesome if you'd click that button and follow along for next time. Or if you'd like to contact me with feedback, you can email me at oursharedpodcast at gmail.com.